This week on Artsbeat, Patrick Healy on London Pub Theatres, places to grab a pint and a performance, and Brian Stelter on Nickelodeon nostalgia and how fans are influencing TV programming. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> don't, don't hurt me! Hey, he does, he does. Some of the original children of the Nickelodeon cable channel for kids are growing up, and they're saying they want their old Nickelodeon back. Now, starting on Monday, Nickelodeon's bringing some of it back indeed. They're putting old shows from the 90s on Teen Nick, and they're promoting it as something that was demanded by the fans. 18 to 34 year olds uh, who miss shows like Clissera Explains It All, Keenan and Kel, all that, and, and my personal favorite of the bunch, Doug, a cartoon that aired from about 1991 to 1994. This programming block, which is being called the 90s or all that, may be evidence of the compression of time. It's as if nostalgia and that feeling is coming to millennials so much sooner than it did for prior generations. And Nickelodeon thinks that's because of the web. Their research shows that because shows never die online, because they're always around in some form on YouTube and their fans are always talking about their shows on Facebook, it's as if we might miss our favorite shows and, and all other forms of pop culture for that matter a lot sooner. Is this a private party or can I join you? This overnight block feels like the start of something, not the end. And right now it's not direct democracy, it's far from it. What networks and viewers both seem to be learning is that viewers are much more participatory than they ever could be before. And the smart networks are the ones that are going to be listening. Quiet! <laughs> this is a library! Can't you read? People are trying to study! How can you be so wrong? We are not violent people. No. The people I sell guns to, they are violent people. It's just their way. I'm not making them violent, I'm just selling them a machine. Like a hairdryer. Off the beaten track, there are a few dozen pubs and bars around London where troops of actors are actually putting on fairly serious dramas, sometimes musicals, that are going on either within the pub space or right above. Pub theatre is basically a old function room of a pub which has been converted into a theatre. Um, so if you take the Findra, the building was built in 1868. It's been a Masonic lodge, a function room, a billiards room, and then was converted into a theatre in 1980. The play that was representative of some pub theatre work in London was Mirror Teeth. It had five actors, a fairly small set without any big special effects, um, a production that was able to really come to life on just $30,000. It's a very middle class English family and the nice middle class girl brings home a black boyfriend, but there's so much more than that. Because we don't have the commercial constraints, etc., is you can do something different. We have to seek out new routes wherever we can. That is our social responsibility. You sound just like my father. Thank you. Very erotic. Part of our programming strategy is we wait for, if somebody pitches a project to us, we wait until they do this. Yeah? So, you know, if, you, if they do, I have to do this play, I really want to do this play, I am passionate about this play, then we'll take it. Is Jamie still in a catatonic state of shock? <laughs> Hold on! I have to be completely committed to the other person and I think that's what, what's so wonderful about this space is doing such raw, terrifying work um, where you, the, you, there is nowhere to hide. There's a real sense of kind of being with your audience. I mean in this show we, we literally share the stage with the audience, They're, we're kind of tripping over them. We banned the use of the word tiny and the use of the word small and we use the word intimate. There's no hiding, which is, which is nice. Um, you get to have a drink after the show, which is nice. But what was exciting about pub theatres in London was the experience, the sense of intimacy, sitting shoulder to shoulder with other people who were almost more revelers than they were audience members. Everyone's a character, and in London anyway you'll get characters, but when you get theatre characters it's just a little bit more special. It's a sophisticated joint, you know, where we all have a lot of love for the many different demands placed on us, whether we're in a service capacity or a dramaturgical one. Like it a little or like it a lot, the Finbra has a voice of its own. It is a good love. 
everything's going to be fine.